Hey there, welcome back. This is Dr. Elizabeth Johnson Milliam with the ICVA, and today we're going to talk all about preparing for the NAVLI. So maybe it is summertime, you're just starting to study, or you've been studying for a while, you want to know kind of what the different options are out there in terms of getting ready for this test. You're in the right place. So let's go ahead and get started. In this video, part one, we're going to talk all about two very important resources, two documents essentially that we provide on our website free of charge. Anybody can see them, literally anyone, they're, they're available. Uh, that should be, in my opinion, and in our opinion, the foundation of your studying. The, sta the foundation of your preparation so it should essentially start from these documents because this is sort of the, the foundation of the NAVLI, okay? Part two of this video series, we're gonna cover the self-assessments. So we're gonna talk about what they are, why they're important, suggested ways to use them, that kind of thing. But today, part one, all about our um, competency domains and about our species and diagnoses lists. Sometimes my accent gets a little sticky. My twang gets a little sticky with the word diagnoses. Uh, I kind of drag out the E and say, you know, because it's, you know, not diagnosis, diagnoses, because it's multiple. But anyway, I digress. Um, let's get started and talk about why we think this is important and some suggested ways to, to utilize these resources so that you can just rock this test. So let's get started and talk about the big picture, right? Before we start diving in, let's talk about the NAVLI and how it's created and how thinking about that can help you with your preparation, okay? So the NAVLI is based on a blueprint that was created by veterinarians. Every several years, we send out a practice analysis survey to determine what is the most current modern picture of veterinary medicine? What should put, be put on this exam? From that information we gather, we write questions to reflect that analysis and that blueprint, okay? Another very important angle to take whenever you're preparing for this exam is that it is written, the level of difficulty it is written in and evaluated and reviewed and edited and reviewed again and edited again, so many pieces to that process. Um, it is written and, and is meant to be uh, measuring entry-level clinical practice competency. Entry-level, entry-level, entry-level. That's why I tell everyone. Very, very important. You're not going to be expected to have a, a super advanced level of knowledge to pass this test, um, but you will be expected to have a decent um, breadth and depth of the, the information. So um, let's go ahead and talk about uh, the, the two documents that we're going to review today. Number one is our competency domains, okay? So again, these are available on our website. This is what they look like. Ooh, ah, oh, I wanna get my ring light. <laughs> uh, so competency domains, I'll show you guys where to, where to find these on our website. They're just located under NAVLI and then subject matter, if you're familiar with that. But um, to me, in my opinion, the way that I sort of explain them is they look a lot like learning objectives. Those of you who are in vet school right now, probably know or, or um, have some sort of learning objective to your didactic courses that you've taken. Maybe there are learning objectives for your clinical rotations, but sort of like an outline for what you are expected to know to master in order to pass the test, in order to pass the class, pass the rotation, that kind of thing. So that's the way that I liken it to it. It looks a lot like an outline, looks like sort of just big lists in different areas, but we break them down into specific competencies for a reason. So here we are on the main page of our website, which is just icva.net. This is the home page. There are two different ways that you can find the documents, the, the PDFs that we've been talking about today. The first one we're going to talk about, of course, is the competency domains. So if you go to assessments and then NAVLI and then to preparation tools, this is where, this is sort of the hub where everything that we're discussing during this video series is located. You have your self-assessments, competency domains, diagnoses, we have a little tutorial that we won't really talk much about, but everything is here. So if we click on the competencies, it takes you to that document. So competency domains, and it's all broken up here. Clinical practice, which by the way is 70% of the exam. Then we have communications, professionalism, practice management, and then preventive medicine and animal welfare. So. It is all here. This is an example. So data gathering and interpretation, a lot of interpreting, diagnostic tests, examination findings, you know, postmortem specimens. So like doing a necropsy, that kind of thing. So that's where you can find it, one spot. And if we go back to the home page and then just actually click NAVLI, you go to the NAVLI page. If you go down here to this awesome drop down menu and go to NAVLI subject matter. There it is again, NAVLI competencies. Easy peasy. So feel free to download this, print it off, upload it, 
It is there for you to study. So these professional competencies are meant to capture what is required of a veterinarian, of veterinarians as they perform their daily responsibilities. So on the NAVLI, in case you were not aware, there are 360 multiple choice questions. I'm not going to get too deep into the weeds on this, but I'm just going to kind of explain the breakdown of questions because this is information that we'll share with everyone. It might help you in terms of where you want to spend the majority of your time preparing for this test, okay? 360 questions, all multiple choice. However, only 300 of those questions are going to be scored for your score report for the sake of whether um, you pass or do not pass this exam. Only 300 questions are scored, okay? And then every single candidate who takes the NAVLI, the breakdown and the competencies of those questions is the same. Not all questions are the same, but the breakdown of the questions is the same in terms of competencies, okay? I have to look at this or I'll forget. So data gathering and interpretation will comprise 140 questions. Health maintenance and problem management will comprise another 140 questions. I think if my math is right, that's 280, maybe, hopefully, fingers crossed. 20 questions will assess your professional behavior and communication skills, as well as your practice management abilities. Okay, so that, fingers crossed, should total 300. That's it, 300 questions. Again, if you can sit here and tell me, hey, my, my data gathering, my interpretation skills are pretty good, problem solving and maybe clinical reasoning is something that maybe you need to work on or maybe it's flip-flopped. Um, maybe you have not had the opportunity to really brush up on your practice management stuff, even though that's, that's not a ton of questions. Use that, again, as the foundation as to where you should be spending your time. Look at your personal strengths and weaknesses and then kind of plug that into these competency domains, okay? So think about... Um, you know, practice management, professionalism, health management, one health concepts, epidemiology, that's all going to be crammed in there because that's, that, that's what being a veterinarian is, right? That's sort of like our oath in action. Um, and then uh, think about the competencies in terms of, of, uh, of uh, how, you should, how you should be studying. The next step within the competencies um, are species groups. So it goes competencies first, then species groups. Let's talk about that now. All right, so this is our NAVLI species breakdown here. I like to show this because I think this is a, a very good, helpful visual. This is information that we make available to anybody who wants it. So this, this, uh, this shows you all the different species that you guys will be tested on on the NAVLI. Again, these are the same species and, and breakdown of species on the um, species and diagnoses list on our website that I've been talking about. But then more importantly, these red letter, red letters, red numbers, uh, red numbers next to the um, next to the species, you'll see um, total up to 300. So that's 300 questions. Again, you're going to be scored on 300 questions. The NAVLI is 360 questions. 60 questions are brand new and not scored um, on your test, but you guys are scored based on 300. So um, the, the biggest takeaway from this that I want you guys to, to hang on to is these top four right here. Dog, cat, horse, cow, dog, cat, horse, cow. Usually whenever someone tells me, hey, I'm getting ready to take the exam or um, I need to take the exam again or I don't know where to start, I usually say those, those four words, those four species, dogs, cats, horses, and, and cattle because that is the, the, a large percentage of these questions. I don't know, I haven't done necessarily the math of, of what percentage. I'm sure you guys can do that fairly quickly. But 77 plus 73 plus 44 plus 40, that's a lot compared to these other guys. Again, not trying to minimize our, our poultry or our um, reptiles or, or, you know, swine or anything like that. But dog, cat, horse, cattle should be where you spend the bulk of your time preparing for this test. Okay. So like I said in the species breakdown for the NAVLI, top four, four most common words you're going to hear anyone in my office say whenever it comes to preparing for this test um, for, for the NAVLI is dog, cat, horse, cow. Dog, cat, horse, cow. Dog, cat, horse, cow. If you watch this video and that's all you take home from it, that's fine with me. Hopefully you take home more. But dog, cat, horse, cow should be where you spend the majority of your time preparing for this test whenever it comes to species. Okay, so that's sort of the, the big picture. Now let's hone in on the, the NAVLI preparation resource that I'm speaking about, which is the, um, other than the competency domain lists or learning objectives, then we have our species and diagnoses. Sort of like a learning objective 
but even more specific because it literally is lists of species and diagnoses. So I showed you guys what that looked like with the competency domain. So this is our species and diagnoses lists. We have it broken down into the individual species or species groups. There you go. And then you guys are going to look and you're going to say, oh my gosh, there are a lot of diagnoses. Yes, there are. There's a lot because we can diagnose and we've, we've discovered a lot of different diagnoses within, within each species group. But what I recommend you guys do is again, what are your strengths and weaknesses? Determine, are you a small animal person? Um, are uh, equine questions and bovine questions something that kind of strikes fear in your heart or makes you a little bit uncomfortable or you know that you're not as strong in that? Okay, then maybe you need to dig deep with the um, bovine and equine questions and the small ruminant questions and, and swine and that kind of stuff. Um, based on these lists so that you can make sure that you have a comprehensive idea of all the different types of species and diagnoses or diagnoses within those species um, in case you forget any. So use that. So um, why is this important? Why do, I, why do I think it's important to use this to study and prepare? Because, you guys, if it is on the NAVLI, I don't know why I'm gesturing over my shoulder. If it is on the NAVLI, it's on these lists. If it is on the NAVLI, it is on these lists. Same for the competency domains, but the competency do domains I know can be a little bit more abstract. If it's on the NAVLI, it's going to be on these species and diagnoses lists. We use these, we update them. This is the very essence of what is on the NAVLI um, that you'll be taking. So use these um, to the best of your, your ability. Um, dog, cat, horse, cow, if it's on the NAVLI, it's on these lists. So now I'm going to take a minute and show you guys specifically kind of where to find these on our website. Uh, and I'll give you some tips on suggested ways to use these, especially the um, species and diagnoses lists. Okay, sounds good. All right, same as last time with the competency domains. I'll just show you just so you can be extra sure that you know where to look. We're on the ICVA homepage again, icva.net. If you go down to preparation tools, and then go to clinical diagnoses, here they are. The nice thing about this PDF is all of these are hyperlinked. So if you click on poultry, it takes you down to the poultry diagnoses. So I know that looking through these, it, it's gonna feel maybe a little bit uh, overwhelming to see all these different diagnoses. But I promise you, if you do kind of use this to your advantage in terms of um, breaking it down, really focusing on the, the species or species groups that uh, might be your weaker area, it won't be as daunting. So, you know, work on this, break it down, use it on your rotations, and uh, it will be helpful to you. And again, same thing as the competency domains. If you click on the NAVLI page here, go down to subject matter, it's right there for you as well. So, easy peasy, there you go. Okay, so hopefully you know where to find that information on our website now. I strongly encourage you to download them, uh, upload them into your note-taking apps, print them off, take them with you for rotations, for classes, all of that. If you're watching this video and you're not even a, a fourth year student or someone who's gonna take the NAVLI anytime soon, definitely download this. This could help you you know, study, so by the time you're ready to, to really start buckling down from the NAVLI, you already have it ready to go, which is amazing. The way that I would suggest using these lists is to take every single um, diagnosis on our list and be able to list off in your own note-taking way, whatever works for you, common clinical signs, presentation, signalment, diagnostic tests, um, treatments prevention, other differential diagnoses for each disease. Just, be, you know, you guys know how to do this. You're professional students. Think about all the different ways, all the different breakdowns of that disease so that you can kind of pick up those little important things. And I think that differential diagnoses um, tip at the end might be a little bit surprising to you, maybe not, because I think it's a lot easier whenever you have a lot of different diseases, a lot of different options to choose from that maybe look the same or sound the same, um, to lump, not split. One of my beloved professors at the University of Tennessee College of Veterinary Medicine, Dr. Melissa Kennedy, she taught virology, and everybody knows viruses kind of tend to kind of look the same, present the same, so it can be overwhelming to look at all the different options. So uh, lump, don't split. That, that, it is what it sounds like, right? Try to create um, similarities between things. So whenever you're, you're reading a clinical vignette, whenever you're reading an Avli question, 
You can pick up on similarities and say, okay, this looks like this, this looks like, you know, three things and two things and one thing. You can kind of narrow it down, funnel, funnel, funnel. So that would be my suggestion. Take every single one of these um, and, and kind of create that little list in your mind of what does it look like? Who's most likely to get it? So like on this list, I'm looking at um, canine diseases under uh, um, lymphatic, so like, okay, lymphoma in dogs, that's kind of a, a softball, but I'll choose that. You know, uh, be able to understand T cell versus B cell. What's the most left, most often um, presentation, generalized lymphadenopathy, um, you know, what are the mean survival times, uh, clinical signs, what, what else can it look like? Maybe a fungal disease, you know, just um, be able to, to think about those things pretty quickly. If you're able to do that off the top of your head, great. If not, dig in, figure it out, especially for those of you who are stronger in certain species areas and certain disciplines than others. So I'm gonna wrap up there. Um, competency domains, species and diagnoses lists. If it's on the NAVLI, it's gonna be on these lists. This is where you should really be spending the bulk of your time in terms of the foundation of your studying, even before you start doing practice questions. Uh, this is it. This is available to you. So have fun. As always, contact us. Contact me if you have any questions at all. E million at icva.net. Crush it. You've got this. Thanks, guys.